Little girl shares her lunch with a stranger, sparking a nationwide movement of kindness. Ellie's life in the small rural town was simple. Her world was filled with the familiar rhythm of school, home, and occasional visits to the local diner, where her mother worked tirelessly. Town itself had seen better days, with faded storefronts and half-empty streets reflecting the hardships its people endured. For as long as she could remember, Ellie had been drawn to helping others, even if it was in small ways. She would hold doors open for her neighbors, help carry groceries for elderly residents, and smile at strangers passing by. Her mother, Sarah, always told her, Kindness is a light in dark places, Ellie. You never know whose life you're brightening with just a little bit of warmth. It was on one of those crisp autumn afternoons when Ellie's path crossed with Jacob's for the first time. After school, she had been waiting on the edge of the playground for her mother, and she noticed a figure sitting by the road. He was bundled in mismatched clothes that looked like they hadn't been washed in weeks, his beard scruffy and gray. There was a tiredness in his eyes, the kind that Ellie had never seen before in someone from the town. Without thinking twice, Ellie approached the man. Hi, she said softly, offering a gentle smile. Are you hungry? I've got some extra snacks. The man looked up, his blue eyes filled with surprise. He hesitated for a moment before nodding slowly. Thank you, he mumbled, taking the sandwich Ellie offered. In that moment, something passed between them, a connection born not from words, but from Ellie's simple gesture. And though she didn't know it then, her act of kindness would set off a chain of events that would change both their lives forever. As Ellie walked away from the stranger that day, she couldn't shake the feeling that there was something special about him. He wasn't like the other people she had met. He seemed lost, not just in the town, but in his own mind. That night at dinner, Ellie couldn't help but tell her mother about the man. There was a man sitting by the road today, Mom, Ellie said pushing a piece of broccoli around on her plate. He looked hungry, so I gave him my sandwich. Sarah paused, concern immediately creasing her brow. Ellie, honey, you have to be careful with strangers. You don't know who he is or where he's from. People can be dangerous, even if they look harmless. I know, Mom, Ellie said softly, but he didn't seem dangerous. He was just sad, like he didn't know where he belonged. Dara sighed looking at her daughter's earnest face. It's good that you want to help, Ellie, but you have to promise me you'll be careful. The world isn't always as kind as you are. Ellie nodded, understanding her mother's worry, but deep down, she felt like helping the man was the right thing to do. She couldn't explain it. Something told her that he needed her. The next day after school, Ellie found herself walking the same path. Sure enough, there was the stranger again, sitting on the same bench, his eyes cast down as if the world had forgotten him. Ellie approached cautiously, this time with a thermos of soup her mom had made for lunch. Hi again, Ellie greeted, her voice soft but cheerful. The man looked up, his eyes meeting hers with a flicker of recognition. I brought you something warm to eat. He stared at her for a moment, and then, without a word, reached out for the thermos. Thank you, he said, his voice rough but sincere. What's your name? Ellie, he replied with a smile. What's yours? The man paused, as if searching his mind for the answer. Finally, he mumbled, Jacob, I think. Ellie's smile faltered slightly. You think? Jacob shrugged, his eyes distant. I don't remember much. For the next few days, Ellie continued to visit Jacob after school. Each time, she brought him something small. Food, blanket, or even just conversation. She learned that he had been wandering from place to place for what seemed like a long time, but he couldn't recall why or where he had come from. The more they talked, the more Ellie realized that Jacob was carrying a heavy sadness, but she didn't know how to help lift it. Sarah noticed her daughter's growing attachment to the stranger. One evening, she sat Ellie down at the kitchen table. Ellie, sweetie, I know you want to help Jacob, but I'm worried. You don't know anything about him. I know, Mom, Ellie said, but he's not dangerous. He's just... bossed. Sarah sighed, brushing a strand of hair from Ellie's face. I just don't want you to get hurt. Promise me you'll be careful. I promise, Ellie said, but she knew she couldn't stop helping Jacob. There was something inside her that told her he needed her, even if she didn't fully understand why. As the days turned into weeks, 
Ellie's kindness seemed to have an effect on Jacob. He started to open up more, telling Ellie bits and pieces of his past, memories that were fuzzy and fragmented. He talked about a family he couldn't quite remember, a life that seemed so far away, and a feeling of being trapped in his own mind. Each conversation felt like a small breakthrough, but there was still so much he couldn't remember. One day, Ellie noticed something new. As she approached Jacob's usual spot, she saw him hunched over, scribbling furiously in a small notebook. When she got closer, he quickly tucked it away, as if hiding something. What are you writing? Ellie asked, curious. Jacob shook his head. Just things. Names. Places. I'm trying to remember. Ellie nodded, not wanting to push him. But as she walked home that evening, her mind was buzzing with questions. Who was Jacob, really? And why did he seem so determined to remember things he'd forgotten? News of Ellie's friendship with Jacob began to spread around the small town, and not everyone was happy about it. Some of the townsfolk started to whisper behind Sarah's back, questioning why she was letting her daughter spend time with a stranger. They feared Jacob's presence, worried that he might bring trouble to their quiet community. At the diner where Sarah worked, one of the regular customers, Mrs. Merton McAllister, cornered her at the counter. Sarah, honey, I hear your Ellie's been spending a lot of time with that homeless man by the road, she said, her voice dripping with concern. You know how people are. They're starting to talk. Sarah wiped down the counter, trying to hide her frustration. Ellie's just being kind, Mrs. McAllister. She sees someone in need, and she wants to help. But you can't be too careful these days, Mrs. McAllister pressed. You don't know what kind of man he is. Sarah forced a smile. I appreciate your concern, but I trust my daughter. She's got a good heart. Still, Sarah couldn't shake the growing worry gnawing at her. As a mother, her instinct was to protect Ellie from the dangers of the world. Ellie's compassion for Jacob was so genuine, so unwavering, that Sarah didn't have the heart to stop her. One evening, as Ellie was finishing her homework, Sarah sat down beside her. Ellie, sweetie, I've been hearing things around town, she said softly. People are worried about you spending so much time with Jacob. Ellie looked up, her eyes wide. But why? He's not a bad person, Mom. He's just... lost. I know, honey, but sometimes people fear what they don't understand. I just want to make sure you're being careful. I am, Mom, Ellie said earnestly, but I feel like I'm helping him. He's remembering more now, and I think he's getting better. Sarah sighed, reaching out to ruffle her daughter's hair. Just promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise, Ellie said, her voice firm. Ellie stared at the soaked notebook in her hands, her mind racing. The name Emily was scrawled across multiple pages, underlined and circled as if it held the key to everything Jacob couldn't remember. She felt a strange mixture of fear and curiosity, wondering who this person was and why they meant so much to him. Her thoughts were interrupted by the sound of approaching footsteps. She looked up to see Jacob walking toward her, his clothes wet from the rain. Where did you go? Ellie asked, her voice tinged with worry. Jacob stopped, his eyes falling on the notebook in her hands. He looked at her with a flicker of recognition, but also something else. An unspoken sadness. I needed to clear my head, he muttered, stepping closer. I didn't mean to leave that behind. Ellie handed the notebook back to him. Who is Emily? She asked softly, watching his expression closely. Jacob's hands trembled slightly as he took the notebook, his eyes avoiding hers. He seemed to be struggling with the question, as if the answer was on the tip of his tongue, but too painful to speak aloud. She's, she was important, he finally said, his voice barely above a whisper. But I can't remember who she is. I think, I think she might have been my daughter. Ellie's heart clenched at the thought. A daughter? Could Jacob have a family out there somewhere, waiting for him to come home? Do you think she's still looking for you? She asked gently. Jacob shook his head, a look of deep sorrow crossing his face. I don't know, he admitted. I don't know if she's even still alive. Everything's so foggy. I remember bits and pieces, but nothing clear. Just her name. Ellie reached out and touched his arm, offering a small gesture of comfort. Maybe we can help you remember more, she said. We could tell my mom. She'll know what to do. Jacob looked at Ellie with a mixture of gratitude and fear. He wasn't sure if he was ready to face whatever lay hidden in his memories. 
but he knew that Ellie's kindness had already brought him further than he'd been in years. Okay, he said quietly. Maybe it's time. That evening, Ellie told her mother everything, about the notebook, the name Emily, and Jacob's possible memory of a daughter. Sarah listened carefully, her concern deepening with each detail. She didn't know if Jacob's story was true or if it was the product of a broken mind, but she could see how much Ellie cared about him. We need to get him help, Ellie, Sarah said, her voice calm but firm. This is bigger than just giving him food and blankets. If he has a family out there, they might be looking for him. We need to involve the authorities. Ellie bit her lip, unsure. But what if they take him away, Mom? What if he doesn't want to be found? Sarah knelt down beside her daughter, taking her hands in hers. If Jacob has a family, they deserve to know what happened to him, and he deserves a chance to heal, even if it's scary. Ellie nodded, though her heart ached with the fear of losing the strange bond she had formed with Jacob. She knew her mother was right, but part of her wanted to protect him from whatever truth might come to light. The next day, Sarah made a call to the local authorities. She explained Jacob's situation as best as she could, and within hours, two officers arrived at their home to speak with him. Ellie watched nervously as they approached Jacob, who was sitting quietly by the road. Sir, we just want to ask you a few questions, one of the officers said kindly. Do you know where you're from or who might be looking for you? Jacob shifted uncomfortably, his eyes darting toward Ellie for reassurance. She gave him a small nod, silently urging him to be brave. I don't remember much, Jacob said, his voice shaky. But I know there's someone named Emily. She's important to me. I think she might be my daughter. I don't know where she is, though. The officers exchanged a glance, clearly realizing the gravity of the situation. We'll look into it, one of them said. We have access to missing persons reports and databases. If there's any record of a man named Jacob with a missing daughter, we'll find it. The next few days were a blur of anticipation and worry for Ellie and Sarah. The police worked quietly in the background, gathering information and searching through databases. Meanwhile, Ellie continued her visits with Jacob, though they both knew things were changing. The bond they had formed felt fragile, like it could shatter at any moment under the weight of whatever truth was about to emerge. Finally, one evening, Sarah received a call from the authorities. We found something, the officer said. There's a man matching Jacob's description who was reported missing over a year ago after a car accident. His name is Jacob Lawson, and he's from New York. He has a daughter named Emily who's been searching for him ever since. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. It was real. Jacob's memories were real. When Sarah shared the news with Ellie and Jacob, the room was filled with a mixture of relief and fear. Jacob's hands shook as he processed the information. Emily, he's alive, he whispered, his voice trembling with emotion. Ellie smiled, tears in her eyes. Yes, Jacob, she's been looking for you this whole time. A few days later, a car pulled up in front of Sarah and Ellie's house. Inside was a woman with tear-streaked cheeks and trembling hands. Emily Lawson, Jacob's daughter. She stepped out hesitantly, as if afraid that everything she had been hoping for might suddenly vanish. When Jacob saw her, froze, his eyes wide with disbelief. Emily, he whispered, his voice barely audible. Emily rushed toward him, tears streaming down her face. Dad, it's me, it's really me, she cried, throwing her arms around him. Jacob stood there, stunned, before slowly wrapping his arms around his daughter. The weight of a year's worth of separation and heartache seemed to melt away in that moment, leaving only the love they had for each other. Ellie and Sarah watched from a distance, their own eyes filled with tears as they witnessed the reunion. It was the kind of moment that seemed almost too good to be true, a moment where kindness, love, and hope triumphed over everything. Over the following days, Jacob and Emily spent hours talking, catching up on everything they had missed. Jacob's memories slowly started to return as Emily shared stories from their past, reminding him of the life they once had together. Emily was endlessly grateful to Ellie and Sarah for taking care of her father, and she insisted on doing something to help them in return. Though Sarah was hesitant to accept, Emily and Jacob's gratitude was unwavering. Eventually, Emily helped arrange for Jacob to return home to New York with her, 
where he could continue receiving the care he needed to fully recover. Before they left, however, they invited Ellie and Sarah to visit them any time they wanted, offering them not only their thanks, but a new sense of family. As the car drove away, taking Jacob and Emily back to the life they were rebuilding together, Ellie felt a mix of sadness and pride. She had made a difference. One small act of kindness had changed everything. Weeks passed since Jacob and Emily's emotional reunion, and life in the small town slowly returned to its regular rhythm. For Ellie, however, things had changed. She couldn't shake the feeling that her act of kindness had created a ripple effect, one that would carry on far beyond her small town. One chilly autumn afternoon, while Ellie was helping her mother at the diner, a familiar voice broke through the quiet hum of customers. Ellie. She looked up, surprised, and saw a familiar figure standing in the doorway. It was Emily, smiling broadly, with Jacob standing just behind her. Ellie's eyes lit up, and she rushed toward them, wrapping her arms around Emily in a tight hug. What are you doing here? Ellie asked, her voice full of excitement. We wanted to visit you, Emily said warmly, and we have a surprise. Jacob stepped forward, looking healthier and more confident than the last time Ellie had seen him. His eyes sparkled with gratitude as he placed a hand on Ellie's shoulder. We wanted to thank you properly, he said, his voice steady. You didn't just give me food and warmth when I needed it, Ellie. You gave me my life back. Ellie blushed, her heart swelling with pride. I just did what anyone would have done. Jacob shook his head. Not everyone would have done what you did. You saw a stranger who needed help, and you didn't hesitate. That's something special. Emily smiled and pulled out an envelope from her bag. We've been working on something, and we wanted you and your mom to be the first to know. She handed the envelope to Ellie, who opened it with trembling hands. Inside was a letter, along with a photo of a beautiful building in the heart of New York City. The letter detailed plans for a new shelter for the homeless, one that Jacob and Emily had started in honor of Ellie's kindness. It was called the Ellie Lawson Center for Compassion. Ellie's eyes widened as she looked at the photo, her heart racing with excitement. This, this is for me? She stammered. Jacob nodded, his eyes filled with emotion. It's for you, Ellie. Because of what you did, we've been inspired to help others who are lost, just like I was. This shelter will provide food, warmth, and care for anyone who needs it, and it will carry your name as a reminder of the power of kindness. Tears welled up in Ellie's eyes, and she turned to her mother, who was standing nearby with her hand over her mouth in disbelief. Dara stepped forward, hugging her daughter tightly. I'm so proud of you, sweetie, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. You've done something amazing. Months passed, and news of the Ellie Lawson Center for Compassion spread quickly. It became a beacon of hope for those who had fallen on hard times, providing food, shelter, and rehabilitation services to those in need. Ellie, though still just a young girl, had unknowingly started something much bigger than she could have ever imagined. Word of the center's success traveled far and wide, drawing attention from not just local communities but also philanthropists and social activists across the country. Emily and Jacob worked tirelessly to ensure the center ran smoothly, and every so often they would send Ellie updates, sharing stories of lives transformed by the center's outreach. Each letter warmed her heart, making her feel that the simple act of offering her sandwich was now making a real difference in countless lives. One cold winter day, Ellie and her mother Sarah were invited to the grand opening of a second Ellie Lawson Center for Compassion, this one located in Chicago. Though Ellie was nervous about being the center of attention, Sarah encouraged her to go, reminding her that this was a celebration of the kindness that came so naturally to her. When they arrived at the event, the scale of what Ellie had set in motion truly hit her. The center in Chicago was massive, bustling with volunteers, media, and people eager to hear the story of the little girl who had sparked a movement. As they walked through the halls, Ellie saw rooms filled with warm beds, stocked kitchens, and quiet spaces where people could receive counseling or simply find peace. A large crowd had gathered in the main hall for the ribbon-cutting ceremony. Emily and Jacob stood at the front, smiling as they motioned for Ellie to join them on stage. The room was filled with applause as Ellie shyly made her way forward, 
Her cheeks flushing with nervous excitement, Emily took the microphone and spoke to the crowd. This center, and the one we opened in New York, wouldn't exist without the incredible kindness of one very special girl. Ellie, you showed us all what it means to care for others without expecting anything in return. And because of you, we're able to offer hope and a new start to so many people. You've inspired us all, and we're beyond grateful. Jacob, standing beside Emily, added, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Ellie. She didn't see a broken man. She saw a human being in need, and that's something the world needs more of. Her kindness helped me remember who I was, and now we're trying to help others do the same. The crowd cheered as Ellie stepped up to cut the ribbon, officially opening the new center. Her heart pounded in her chest as she held the large ceremonial scissors, but she managed to smile through the nerves. With one clean cut, the ribbon fell, and the center was officially open for those in need. As Ellie and her mother prepared to leave Chicago after the opening, they were approached by a reporter from a major news network. Ellie, the reporter said, you've done something truly remarkable. What inspired you to help Jacob that day? And what do you think people can learn from your story? Ellie thought for a moment before answering. I just wanted to help someone who needed it. I didn't think about anything else. My mom always told me that kindness is important, and I guess that stuck with me. If everyone did just one kind thing every day, the world would be a much better place. Her words resonated with everyone who heard them, and soon the story of the Ellie Lawson Centers for Compassion spread across national media. People from all over the country reached out to volunteer, donate, and support the growing network of centers. More cities began planning their own branches, and Ellie's simple act of kindness became the foundation for a nationwide movement. Back home, life for Ellie and her mother remained much the same, but now with a newfound sense of purpose. Ellie continued to help at her local community center, inspired by what she had seen in New York and Chicago. Every day, she reminded herself that kindness could change the world, one person at a time. Years later, when Ellie looked back on everything that had happened, she often thought of Jacob and that fateful day when she offered him her sandwich. Seemed like such a small thing at the time, yet it had led to the creation of something far bigger than she ever could have imagined. The Ellie Lawson Centers for Compassion had grown into a national network, helping thousands of people find food, shelter, and hope. As Ellie entered adulthood, she became more actively involved in the work of the centers, traveling to new locations, speaking to volunteers, and sharing her story. Every time she spoke, she reminded people of the power of a single act of kindness. The power of one person make a difference, no matter how small the gesture. Ellie's story became a symbol of hope and compassion, inspiring countless others to take action in their own communities. Over time, the Ellie Lawson Centers for Compassion expanded beyond the United States, with locations popping up in other countries, all carrying the same message. Kindness and change the world. As she stood at the opening of the first international center in London, surrounded by people who had been touched by her story, Ellie realized that her journey was far from over. There would always be more people to help, more acts of kindness to give, and more lives to change. And with each new center that opened, Ellie knew that the ripple effect of that one small sandwich, given in a moment of compassion, would continue to spread across the world.